So, first questions, who are you and where are you from? I am Connor Tibbetts. I am from Concord, New Hampshire. My name is Mikhail Gray. I'm from Chicago, Illinois, Southside. My name is Kamal Bilal. I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Sunny Sparks from Inglewood, California. My name is Raquel. <laughs> I'm from the Bishop Paiute Reservation in Bishop, California, which is about four hours northeast of here. Justin Sparks. I grew up in Inglewood, California. I'm um, Stephen Fossils. I'm originally from LA, but I'm out here in Fontana. My name's Annabelle Nash. I'm from Los Angeles, California. <coughs> My name is Jesus Chavez. They call me Wolvie. I'm from Compton. I'm currently living in Rialto. My name is Jewel Patterson, and I'm from San Bernardino County. My name is Dean Muniz. I'm from Fontana, California. So, how would you like describe or like define an at risk youth? I define an at risk youth as, a, you know, somebody living in the streets, having to come up from the bottom, making it back to the top. Well, the definition they gave me, it was more as jail terms, like you're risking it, you're risking what's going to happen next, like. I'm in jail right now for a month, just say a month, I'm risking that. I can go up to seven months. That's how they use that term for me. Who is this they? They is San Bernardino County, Juvenile Hall. Uh, I think when like, people, they like describe at-risk youth, it's more, it's like at risk of falling back into like a poverty-stricken environment <clears throat> or into crime, is what they mean. And so for me, it just, signifies not that people are stupid but a lack of education in the area about certain things and that like the local like the local governments and stuff aren't doing enough to help out these kids to get out of the situation they're in so it puts them there puts them at risk just for like their well-being so how would you like to describe growing up for you i describe it i mean i don't describe it hard i mean at least not for me um Maybe for somebody else, you know, all these chumps in the street, maybe they might think it's hard, but I mean, I find it pretty simple. You know, you gotta knock a couple heads off, make it through life, you gotta do what you gotta do. Both of my parents are gangbangers. Everybody around me, you know, their friends or whatever, they're all gang, gang members or, you know, drug dealers. Just people that did bad things. My pops was always locked up, my mom's was always gone, you know. I don't want to say what she was doing, but she was doing, you know, bad stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, my sister pretty much raised me, her and my grandma. Uh, it was just, it was tough, you know what I mean? Grew up around gangs, around drugs, been shot at, just things that other people haven't been through and stuff I don't think anybody should have to go through growing up. How old were you when you, like, first, like, broke the law? Uh, eight, eight, seven. I was in second grade, just stole some some stuff from a liquor store, which was like probably like a bag of chips or like some drinks mm -hmm. with some friends. That's pretty much it. Well, I got arrested at 13 for the first time. Um, that was just pretty much stealing. Just like I stole the CD. I already had the money in my pocket. I just wanted the CD and I already had the CD. Uh -huh. But this certain in particular CD came with a DVD. And the one I got didn't have a DVD. So I just stole the DVD out the CD and ended up getting caught. I mean, you know, I was probably young. I, I was hungry and I took some chips. This is, I mean, it was how easy as that. I was, I don't even know how old I was. I was in grade school though, like, <clears throat> probably like fourth grade. Mm. And I was hungry. My grandma said, no, you know, put that back. I told you we have something for one dollar. <clears throat> and I was like, but I'm thirsty and hungry. So I took the chips too. I was at this like skate shop with my mom. And this lady gave me a sticker. She's like, oh, you're so cute. Here's a sticker. And then she put like a perfume bottle in front of where I was standing. And I justified it as if like, oh, she just gave me a sticker. So she's giving me this perfume bottle too. And I took it. And then I, re like, I got in the car, put my seatbelt on. We started driving away. I'm like, mom, look what the lady gave me. Because I knew, I knew I did something bad. I want to say what I remember would be like somewhere around 13, somewhere around there, my ninth grade year in high school. I got caught um, by a sheriff's office. 
I was in school gambling and shooting craps. And instead of going to class, I was ditching school, kicking in the streets, you know, the homies and shooting craps. And out there in Compton, shooting craps, gambling, that's illegal. It's a misdemeanor, but it's still illegal. And that, and I ran from the cops. Fortunately, I got caught. Once I got home, I mean, I thought I was gonna get a complete ass whooping when I got home. All my mom told me was like, next time you better learn how to run faster. That's what she told me. So then how old were you when you first like did like your real, like a real criminal act? I gotta say it's like around the same time. A real criminal act. That's when gang bang got involved. That's when we start pushing all these different neighborhoods in the streets. I wanna say I was like 18. Like we uh, snuck into a club and then we got caught up and we beat up the guard and then ran away and the cops chased us and luckily we got away you know i don't i don't know how but we got away um i was always in trouble like a teenager i used to just fight i got kicked out of a lot of schools mm -hmm. so um i used to go to court a lot i used to get tickets so i was in and out of court the first 13 was when i got arrested uh i got arrested again at 20. that was just more of a serious offense mm -hmm. just uh at first it was a, a attempted murder, mm -hmm. and then um, it got dropped down to an assault with a firearm. I mean, I want to say what I've seen. I don't want to say what I did. Yeah, yeah. What I've seen, I mean, I've seen a lot of a lot of crazy shit. Um, I mean, I've seen shit to where it's like, I mean, I've seen drive-bys. I've seen shootings. I've seen stabbings. I've seen all that shit. I've even seen somebody get raped. I've seen some dudes get raped. I mean, it's some nasty shit, but there be some some rules and shit you just can't break, and motherfuckers get the hard treatment from that shit. And it is what it is. Fifteen. Robbed a kid. Robbed a kid for his phone. A little bit of money. What led you to doing that? The paper, money. It's the only thing that's pretty much in charge right now. Everybody killing and fighting over it. But money's something else. It could change somebody's life. Either in bad ways or good. But yeah, that's kind of why I did it because of the money. I thought he had money on him. He looked like he had money on him. So, what do you think, like, led to you kind of doing these criminal acts? That's surviving. That's all that's called. That's survival one on one. Hit the main street, you gotta do what you gotta do. We call that the main line. When you're out there in the street doing what you do, your dirt right there, that's the main line. You do your dirt in the main line. What happens, happens. My pride, I guess. I didn't like being known as like somebody who was rich or somebody who was like, you know what I mean? Cause I knew where I came from and I didn't understand that. Like, I don't know. And I, it's like, I, I kind of, sometimes I felt like to be black, like I would have to go through something. You know what I mean? Like I had to go through, you know, stealing. Like I had to go, you know, in and out of whatever kind of facility I need to go. I needed to go through something, you know? My, I just wanted to prove myself to everybody else and just show everybody else, like, I'm not just this rich girl. Like, I'm down, and I can do what y'all do. I think the first and most important and the biggest one is love. And there is there is a lot of that in our communities, but at the same time, it's missing a lot of, like, very important elements of love, and a lot of it's conditional love rather than unconditional love. Pretty much just no attention. Pretty much it. I'm not no attention at all. And I, I didn't honestly, I didn't, I didn't really give a fuck. At the time I was like, I don't care. I, I don't need no attention. And then there was stuff I wanted. But I know it was tough for my mom's, you know. So, like everybody said, if you want something done, you gotta get it done yourself. And that's what I did. And I got what I wanted. It was a t shirt, but I got what I wanted. <laughs> And a lot of that has to do with just like the idea of materialism and how colonization has brought us to be as people. Boredom and not having money. Like if I had had enough money and my parents were like able to be like, yeah, here's $10 if you want to go hang out with your friends, I would have no problem buying it. But like, I don't know, it was it was available. We were bored. We were just we're sitting around all the time. There wasn't a lot of stimulation in my town. And we were like, you know what, this is something to do to get like adrenaline pumping. Like we get food out of it, like why not? So I would say that being poor and bored makes people do, makes people do stuff like that. I think pain leads to 
reads to it, just like, um, I don't know, I feel like people, are, like a lot of my friends are just in pain and like need an outlet. Sometimes the music or the sport is not able to give them all that they need. So they go into robbing and stuff like that. Sometimes it's because um, of the race that the rat race that they're in, and they they don't want to work for them like a, like somebody else. So they're gonna get their money by themselves, and maybe that probably leads to robbing someone or doing stuff like that. Um, sometimes drugs, like um, the use of drugs, have Probably like, I want to say like friends and like, you know, I seen people do that when I was younger and they got away with it. So I'm like, you know, I can get away with it. And then, you know, some friends pressure you to do things, you know, even if you don't want to do it, but you don't want to be like that one odd one, you know what I'm saying, that don't do it. Uh, there's a lot of people here that don't have money or don't have the things that other people have. And the way somebody started off their life, started off young gang banging or, you know, getting tattoos. Like I have a bunch of tattoos and I'm, I'm not a criminal, but I just looked apart. If you look at me, a lot of people will assume that I'm, you know, a gang banger or something like that because of where I come from and what I look like. And it's hard for people to get jobs. And in order for these people to feed their families, to put a roof over their head, you know what I mean? They have to do something to, to get money. And whether that's robbing people or, you know, selling drugs or whatever it has to be, like, to them, that's what they have to do because they have to get money. Yeah. You can't just be here being broke. You know what I mean? Like, thank God I have a good job. I could feed my son. But, I mean, there's people that can't do that with just a job. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, some people have to do what they got to do. Yeah. It, it's bad because, I mean, it, like me, I seen a lot growing up. Because my parents had to do something that, you know, to get money in their way. Yeah. My dad hasn't had a real job in I don't know how long. Right now he's locked up for trying to get money for his family, you know what I mean? And it's just, that's what it leads to. I don't know, I can't really pinpoint it on one certain thing because I see how systematic everything is and how this cycle just happens. And it all plays a part in like, making these kids grow up to be good people or making them grow up to be broken, whatever you want to call it, depressed, not at an advantage like other people. And I think violence definitely plays a big part. And there's a lot of violence in this city. You can't help but either, you know, pick up a gun yourself and man up or whatever you want to call it, that's what they see. Or, you know, try and make another change, get out of the city to the fight or flight. Did you always think that you were gonna participate in like criminal action? Oh yeah, when I was eight years old, I made a plan for myself. To be honest, when I was eight years old, I thought I was going to be a prostitute at 16. I said, that's just how it is. That's the only way I'm going to be able to make money is if I, you know, do what these girls are doing out here. The only way I'm going to be able to make money is if I be smart and use what I have. And this is what I have. And so, at eight years old, I didn't know that, but at eight years old, I'm thinking like, I planned out when I was going to have my first kiss. I planned out when I was going to do this, do that. And then I planned out being a prostitute. But I was only going to be a prostitute for a little while until I got to where I needed to be. Then I was going to be on the higher end of things and probably prostituting people. I don't know what I thought after that. But. I mean, I, I was born into it. So there was no not getting into it. It was there. There was no other option but to do it. It was just where I was going to get from. That was the question. It wasn't a question of, am I ever going to be from nowhere? No, I'm going to be from somewhere. I just want to know who I want to be from. That was a list, category. I got to search through to see who I want to affiliate myself with. Who is the best? Who's stronger? Who do I want to push it with the hardest? Mm -hmm. That's all I... That's all I